beautiful people it's Nastasia and welcome 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 back to my channel as you can tell a girl got a breast a girl got a breast reduction surgery who for those who know no for those who know no anyway in this video I'm gonna walk you through my experience I'm going to tell you what prompted the decision to actually get a surgery in the first place. Um, talking to my doctor, what that was like. Actually talking to different surgeons, feeling out the vibe. Going for surgery, actually getting a date. Prepping for surgery. Arriving for surgery, after surgery treatment, experience, recovery before and after picture because I know that's why you're here <laughs> but I'm gonna walk you through all of those I'm gonna really tell you my honest truth and my honest experience um, and pretty much tell you how I'm feeling and how this really changed my life so if that's something that you're interested in just get really comfortable get a drink or something a little water and let's talk let's talk let's talk <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> Before we get started, I'm gonna simply ask you to hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, like the video, share the video with anyone who you may know or is actually thinking of getting a surgery, breast reduction surgery, a breast lift, a augmentation or whatever they call it share this with them also turn on that notification bell so that you're notified when I do post my videos so hit that like button subscribe turn on that notification bell so let's get started it's time to talk so I actually filmed this before and I wasn't wearing a bra <laughs> and nipples were pew 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 pew. So I had to put on another bra. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. So, what? Why I decided to get a breast reduction surgery? I considered many different factors, but the main reasons are: one, I was in a lot of pain. My back was not only hurting me in one place, but all three places. My lower back, my middle back, and my upper back. Because I had really bad posture from having the breasts weighing as much as it weighed on my chest. It was a lot for me to carry around. And because of that, it actually won. Like, my back was just like, I cannot manage the weight. So I was like this all the time. I was like, oh. It was just like that all the time so it's not even it's not just sitting sitting for too long hurts I have to be if when I'm at work I have to be sitting in different positions to like cope throughout the day and that's not the quality of life no standing a lot of pain in lower back lower middle back um, running merely impossible sleeping most of the time the pain that I'm feeling really prevents me from having a good night's sleep um, another thing another reason is it restrained me from doing a lot of things like exercising because each time I exercise and I push myself you know these boobs had me thinking I was lazy no my body <laughs> My body was like, just rest. Just rest until you get your surgery. There's not much activity you can do that won't cause strain to your back. But when I do convince myself that, oh, you're lazy, you need to work out, you need to do this, you need to do that, and I went to the gym, I have to go to physiotherapy. I have to go to the chiropractor. I have to go and get a massage because my back is killing me. On top of the pain that I'm already feeling, I was feeling way more pain when I do exercise and when I do certain stuff. And the third reason is, to be honest, like I didn't like my boobs. My boobs were huge. Big titty, just, just big and heavy. I didn't feel good in myself. I was walking around in pain. What kind of quality of life is that? And I didn't like the way I look. The weight of the boobs on my shoulder and my back really prevented me from enjoying life prevented me from actually going out and actually having fun because while I'm there 
all I'm thinking is, oh, my back, oh, I just wanna go home and just lay on the floor, or little stuff like that. So, I'm happy that I got the surgery. You know, I'm no longer the big breast fat gal. <laughs> I'm no longer the improper fraction, you know, the seven over five, and those are things that people used to call me. Not make that fears me. So you see these marks right here? Those are the marks from wearing bra and having a big boobs. So I forgot to put that in. So yeah, those marks, I prefer, I haven't done anything to them, pretty much because I literally just got my breast reduction surgery and I prefer to fix the problem and not the symptoms of the problem. This is a symptom. So now that I fixed the problem, I can work on this because if I was like trying to constantly remove the marks, remove the marks, what kind of arm would that bring to my skin? Oh yeah, so that's why I got my breast reduction surgery. So let's talk about consultation. Actually, I've been going to my doctor for um, a little while, knowing about the pain, but due to the COVID, um, it was hard to get a surgeon. I actually went to two surgeons before I, I found my the, my surgeon that did my boobs. So the first one, it was just constantly, and this was like in at the end of 2020. I believe he scheduled a consultation for December. However, he pushed it back to me, March, and then he pushed it back to me, and then it just keep pushing back until he eventually canceled due to COVID. And she sent me to another surgeon, and I just didn't like the vibe. It's like, I, the way I felt was like I was just something on somebody's to-do list. It's just, okay, meet with Anastasia, see what, what she wants, and see if she's suitable. Like I didn't, I didn't feel the vibe that she cared about me and what I was going through. And if it is that you're gonna cut my body open, I need to know that you at least like me or at least care for me, or at least want the best for me. And I think I wasn't getting that from her. Um, I mentioned it to my doctor, even though I was willing to still go through with that surgeon, um, when I mentioned it to my doctor, and she, she also told me to lose weight. Um, my doctor did not take that lightly because of other health issues that I do have that prevent me from losing weight. Um, so she did not like that. So she actually called her and I like, tell her off and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so she did recommend me to my surgeon and it was a bit far because I am in Toronto and she is in Newmarket and I was willing to make the travel to go to Newmarket to actually get the surgery done. I even like when I first saw her she I felt like she cared. She was like oh honey I'm gonna I'm gonna make you feel better and that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for somebody to care about me and want the best for me and want to help me make me feel better and that's what I liked. I liked the vibe that I got from her. She really cared and she was like oh then when she lifted up my boobs she, <laughs> she held my boobs like this you know like and she was like we're gonna take this off <laughs> and to be honest I felt good inside. I felt good inside. And this consultation was October 7th. And I made the travel and I met with her and I was so happy that that we we actually mesh. Is what is mesh an English word? We we vibe, we have we're on the same wavelength. We like she want the best for me and I was not just a task for her. And I'm gonna put a picture of her right here. Her, She's Dr. Ayani. I'm gonna share her picture right here. I'm also gonna link her website in the description box down below. So please feel free to check out her page. And also I'll probably put her Instagram somewhere on the screen as well. So, search, I met with her, I had my cancel consultation. It was just time to get the surgery. And I got the call. <laughs> Hi Anastasia, how are you? I was like, hi. She was like, I have a slot for tomorrow at 8 a.m. Do you want to take it? This was about like 12 on January 3rd. Call me around like 12 o'clock, 12 noon to ask me if I'm ready for surgery at 8 a.m. in the morning. So I was just like, woof. I was just like, okay, um, let me call you back. 
um because you need somebody to take care of you and in that short notice my auntie or anybody in jamaica never did go on no flight to come up here in a covid time so i was just happy that i have my lovely friend who could uh, take care of me um and help me out while i recover so let's talk about prepping for the surgery because all of these had to go i had on my nails i had on lash extensions i couldn't wear a wig or anything so i had to wash my hair i blow dry it and i just put it in a little bun and by that time i look like i look so tired i'm so like in the morning i was just so tired because i who sleep yeah you doing surgery in the morning sleep where good morning so it's the morning of my surgery and um it's now 5 a.m and i'm leaving out i need to reach to the hospital at 6 a.m so i literally did not sleep last night i'm so tired anyways i'm so excited and i'm ready to go it was at 8 a.m. I had to reach here two hours before to do my registration and little work and stuff and talk to the nurses about like medication and stuff like that. She did give me an envelope with information like pills that you should stop taking, food that you should stop taking, stop eating from midnight, stop drinking from midnight. So I didn't eat or drink anything from midnight. So I went there, but because of the COVID time, I was supposed to get a COVID test prior to going. So I had to get one done at the hospital and it was a long, 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 long wait. A long, 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 long wait to actually get the results. When I got my gown and I went inside after getting my negative COVID test and I was in the waiting room and my surgeon came to check on me, not once, but twice. And she was just like, how are you feeling? I was just like, I'm so nervous. Let me tell you, I cannot describe that feeling when you're about to go in surgery, you don't know if you're going to wake up. Mm. Jesus, God is good. <laughs> God is good because let me tell you, they made me feel so 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 comfortable and they walk me through the entire process so it's not just doing it they actually tell me what they're going to do prior to actually doing it so that i don't panic they tell me how i'm going to feel by when um they, oh you're gonna feel a little pinch a little pinch push it in oh we're gonna put some medication in it's gonna feel cold at least i know that when i feel the cold feeling it's, it's how I was supposed to happen and my mind don't tell me oh something is wrong something is wrong so I really like the fact that they communicate they tell you what you're gonna what they're gonna do and how it's gonna make you feel and then when it's time for them to put in the anesthesia they actually told me say okay so we're gonna um administer the anesthesia now you're gonna feel slow and me gone <laughs> <laughs> by the time says oh god just god just god like the surgery literally took almost five hours because i had a lot of booby i had a lot of booby and if i'm talking too much let me show you right here a picture of how much booby i had and i'm so happy that she actually helped me she in total removed 9.5 pounds of breast tissue she tested it just to make sure that there are no cancer cells or no lumps or no no nothing in the breast tissue so i'm all clear of that she told me on my one month post-op um appointment so yeah so after surgery waking up this nurse was just waking me up she was like hi nastasia how are you let me tell you that feeling after surgery when you just wake up and you're when you're high on all of those medication it's so sad but that's a really good feeling anyways that's all i'm going to say so she was just like hey nastasia are you feeling pain and i'm just like yes pain give me medication she was like um you've been sleeping for over an hour and a half now you have to wake up okay i'm just gonna give you a little bit more and it's gonna kick in for when you're going home i was just like yeah pain 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 because in my head if you give me <laughs> give me more i feel better anyways that's just a really bad that was just me under all of the drugs and liking it which is really bad really 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 bad i shouldn't be liking it that much not gonna talk about that no more <laughs> anyway she gave me some and then she gave me I just knocked out again and then like i remember like my 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 
I remember seeing my surgeon and just there, oh, thank you, like sobbing. I, I, did, I didn't even ask her like if we spoke afterwards because I, I'm literally the worst. Like I get so emotional when I'm, when I'm like, like that. And like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not very emotional. So like me, and I know that, um, it was a big life changing thing. I thought, I think I was crying. Like I can't remember. Uh, I don't really remember much, but I was just pouring out my heart to everybody that day. Pouring my heart to my surgeon. I told my friend I love her so much and I appreciate her. And she was like, yeah, Anastasia, yeah. I think she was, <laughs> I think she was probably freaked out because I, 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 I don't, I don't. The expression thing, we're, we're learning. We're learning, but it's always okay to tell somebody you love them when you love them. It's always okay to tell somebody how they make you feel and how you appreciate them. But it's hard some of the time, but we do understand that. Moving forward, so afterwards they took me to the second, so there are two recovery rooms. The first one where I got the little medication that made me feel good. And she took me to the second recovery room where they gave me, they asked me like, hi Anastasia, what would you like to drink? Um, and I think I told them orange juice and ginger ale because I knew I had gas. Like I've had to have gas if I haven't eaten and it's like probably five, six o'clock by then. And I haven't eaten all day so I had gas. So I was like ginger ale and the like orange juice. Uh, she brought me my personal belongings, like my phone, my clothes for me to get dressed. She helped me get dressed and then she called my friend to come and pick me up. So I had drains in because of the volume of how big my boobs were, I had to get tubes in, and that was really the most uncomfortable thing ever. I was afraid to like, put on my arm, so majority of the time my arm was like this, you know, because <laughs> I was so afraid of the pain. Um, I was so uncomfortable to see, to sleep. I, it was just so uncomfortable to sleep, so. Um, I normally put it in here, like put it in my clothes. So I pin it on to like my surgical bra or my sports bra and and then put a blouse over it so that my hand is not like in it through the night because I sleep very, very wild. But surprisingly during that time, I slept in one position and I woke up in the same position because like I had the pillow really stuffing me so it really prevented me from sleeping. Of course, it's not the best quality sleep, but I prefer that versus waking up and there's blood everywhere. So I didn't have, there was no need for me to like pad my bed or anything because like I was bandaged up all around and I'll share pictures right here of when I was leaving the hospital and how the bandage um, looked. Um, I will also show you how the the first night was looking like back the, when I got the first nurse visit and I was like so bloody all over. Um, so I'm gonna show you that picture now if you don't like blood well, it's not a lot of blood it's just gonna see blood stain not blood running because blood running creeps out everybody <sighs> yeah before the nurse came i got delivery from the pharmacy with um pamphlets and gauze and cleaning stuff um just different th things to clean the wound and supplies that the nurses will need to actually take care of me while i'll be in their care um, so yeah, so I got the delivery everything came I confirmed the nurse came over I got that for three days and on the fourth day I had to go to um, The clinic to actually get them to look at the wound and look and stuff like that But it wasn't ready for the tube to come out and I was able to like dress myself um, So I didn't go to the clinic until like I, it was time when the nurse told me to go and get the tubes removed which was like day six that I got the tubes removed. However, I had to um, do two things to my drains before I got them removed. I had to milk the, the, the drain and I ha had to record and measure each, what's this thing? Each suction bottle, each suction, each, uh, this little thing that collects the blood, I had to make sure that I measure um, the amount of blood that I get each day so the nurse showed me I had to like milk the drains because sometimes you have blood that's stuck in there and it's not flowing into the tube even though the tube it not the tube the cup the suction cup thing even though that is 
really supposed to be sucking because when you open it, it opens like a little ball. And then when you're closing it, you should push it together and then close it so that it pulls everything that's coming from inside my boobs, right? So that was happening, but I was getting a li little liquid, like a small amount of liquid. So she showed me how to milk the tube and I had to do it safely. So I just hold a part of it, squeeze it down, hold another part, squeeze it down, but not put it in any tension here because right here it's in my skin. It's in my body. So when it's time for me to get my drain removed, I was so nervous because they're just going to pull it out, pull it out, and you're gonna feel that. Even my boobs, like I even saw my nipple twitching while she was pulling out. She was gently pulling it out though. Um, there was a stitch that was keeping it inside, like securing it, she had to cut that out and then take out that stitch. And then she pulled the tube out my side. And then blood is not my friend. And I don't like to see blood. But but when she pulled it out and I saw it to blood run, it's like my head gets so light. She had to like give me like a water. Even the day when I saw my boobs for the first time and she was just cleaning, like I had to sit down the entire time with my hand on my head. I got to see if I can show a picture right here. I had to sit down with my hand on my head because weak, just weak. Like it's, it's just not for me. It's just not for me, that, that line of work. I, I was not made to like see such graphic stuff. It's not for me. Anyways, so I got my tube removed and I felt so much more comfortable. Um, I could sleep better. Um, I was feeling way, way, way more better. Um, the pain wasn't so bad. The pain was, um, I wasn't really feeling any pain. Okay, so let's talk about how I'm feeling now. So let's talk about sensitivity. Sensitivity. So immediately after the surgery, this boob was boobing. This one was like, yeah, I'm not ready yet. This one was so sensitive that even when I was cleared for surf for shower, I had to cover my nipple when I was showering because it was so pain. Like it wasn't painful. It was just sensitivity. Like, you know, when you're just about to start your period and you feel your nipples get, you know, like sensitive. That's the kind of sensitive times five that I'm talking about. It wasn't nice. It wasn't a nice feeling. However, it, I could feel stuff. This one now, um, it took a little while because um, I even put ice on it and I wasn't feeling the ice. Um, but now it comes out now and then I say hi. I'm not feeling any pain. Like I'm healing nicely. I still have tapes around my boobs so once those fall off because this is just my one month um, post-op that I'm sharing and I initially just got the surgery my boobs were like so hard it was so stiff but now like they're they're like jiggly like they're moving now um, and I feel like they, they feel more realistic realistic now versus how they were feeling before so before they were just there like I could jump and they don't move I could shake they don't move. I could dance 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 and they don't go nowhere and now like they have a little movements they have a they you see like what if, if, it's hard for me to like explain to you if you didn't see them before but yeah so this is what my boobs look like now with the tapes, I'll put a picture right here so you can see what it looks like now. Um, take that in. So now I'm going to, just going to show you the before and after picture of what my boob looked like. So this is the day of the surgery when my surgeon really draw up on me uh, prior to literally laying down on the table for my surgery. And then this is how I am one month after the surgery getting better, getting there, feeling better, feeling happy, and I have no regrets at this point. And I don't think I'll ever have any regrets. And this is one thing that I'll tell you, majority of the persons who I know who actually got a breast reduction surgery, they all said that they felt like their life literally started then. They felt like they've been living way more. And it's because of the quality of life that you're living now, going throughout the day, thinking about yourself, feeling better. Um, also the pain, not being in pain daily, 
that says something now I sleep okay like I sleep comfortably I sit now I don't need anything to lay back on normally I have to have um, something to lay back on if I don't have anything like chairs without a back I cannot sit on them because I needed the back support now when I go to work I walk different my co-workers are saying to me Nastasia you look so nice you're walking different you, are you something something change about you you're walking different <sighs> come on you can tell that my something lifted my spirit and it's because I do not have 9.5 pounds more on my chest than what I have now. My surgeon removed 9.5 pounds and I'm so happy that I met her. I'm so happy that I got even got the opportunity to do the surgery. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that breast reduction surgery is actually free in Canada. And I'm just so happy that I even have access to that kind of healthcare. I am Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica, but I'm a Canadian resident, um, which means that healthcare is free for me. So coming from a country where everything, if the eye RT you have to pay, your foot RT you have to pay. Coming from a country like, that, country like that to a country where damage to the back can really prevent you from working, can really pull you from the workforce, and Canada don't really want that. So if it is that they can prevent you from reaching that stage, they're looking at it like, okay, if it is that we do this surgery for free, they remain in the workforce longer and live a better, healthier, happier life. And I think that that's what they're looking for when they say yes, breast reduction surgeries are free. So I'm happy for that. So I literally pay zero dollar, even for my medication and for my nurses coming to my apartment to take care of me, zero dollar. I got two deliveries of medical supplies from the pharmacy. I paid nothing. Um, it didn't even come under like my insurance where I had to pay for anything. It was all a part of the surgery because I opted to leave the to do the one day surgery rather than stay in the hospital. So all of that were all of that cost covered. Um, so I'm just so happy that I even got the opportunity to actually get that done um, at zero dollar. Zero dollar to me. So I'm just so happy, I'm so grateful that I am healthy and I'm feeling good. And I'm happy that I got my surgery. So if there's something that I did not cover in this video and you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. I will be there answering questions again share this video with anyone you may know who is thinking about getting a breast reduction surgery please remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you're notified when i post my video as i said earlier it costs you nothing to subscribe to my channel so please go ahead and give me some love show me some love let me know if you have any questions share 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 this video and i thank you so much for even watching to the end i know it was a lot of talking uh, but i do hope that i explained everything and i shared my entire experience with you i am still recovering this is just one month post-operation um, check up so thank you so much for tuning in I'm so grateful um, that you clicked on my video and um, welcome to the family thank you so much do have a wonderful day and stay safe